right this week. All right, so welcome, welcome, welcome to the first ever Boss Teacher Live. I'm really happy that you decided to come on and just hang out with me for the first official. Now, seeing that tonight's session is the first official session in the Boss Teacher Live series, I am going to use it as an opportunity to just introduce to you the concept of, of what this is, why I've decided to do it, and how we're going to move forward. So if you do have any questions, considering the limitations with the chat right now, and you have any particular specific questions for me, I want you to do this. Make a note of this. Go into Facebook and search for a group called the Teacher Entrepreneurship Teacher Entrepreneur Success Club, and just post your, your comments there, post your questions from tonight's session. That is the community of teacher entrepreneurs who are really looking to thrive and build and grow our businesses together. I check that Facebook group every single day, except for weekends. Um, so every day during the week, I check that group. So if you post your questions there, I will be able to respond to them directly once i log in but pr i promise you i promise you next week we are going to have the chat up and running so you we can interact because that's my thing i'm a teacher that's my jam all right so i want you to just pay attention right now and like i said if you have any questions post them in the facebook group teacher entrepreneur success club and I also want you to take notes because even though this is the first session and this is going to be like an overview, I am definitely going to leave you with value tonight. Okay, so grab a pen, grab a piece of paper and get ready to start implementing, putting in the work from tonight. Good. The other thing I want you to do, I said to you, ask your questions. I want you to not just ask questions, ask a lot of questions. Here's why. Because you're, whenever you ask me questions, it gives me ideas as to what it is that I can produce in the coming episodes. Now, here's the thing. I know exactly what I want to share with you. It's not like I don't know. I know exactly what I want to share with you already as it relates to building out online courses, um, as it relates to building an online business and all of those things. However, one of the things I have found is that I can always teach, but if I don't teach what you want, then you are not going to pay attention. You're not going to implement and you're not going to see the results. So, so I asked inside of the Facebook group, uh, what are some of the things that you guys want to learn? And, and the number one response I've gotten was marketing in relating to building out your business, marketing, Mar nine out of 10 people said marketing literally nine out of 10. And so I know I'm going to be talking a lot about marketing, um, over the, the period, but I want to know what else do you want to learn? So the more questions you ask, it gives me an idea of how to tailor future episodes of our little Monday night sessions together. So anything that comes to mind, guys, ask away because then I can literally build out an entire session based on the response that I would give you. Now, one of the reasons I decided that I was going to start this session because I've seen where individuals as teachers, we know how to teach. We have a good grasp on what it is that we want to deliver in our classroom. Our lesson plans are top notch. We have our activities and everything. But when it comes on to stepping out of outside of the classroom into a different realm outside of our comfort zone with our 45 kids in front of us, we are clueless and we have no idea what to do. Now, fortunately for me, I fell in love with technology very early. I think it was way back in 2011. I really just developed an extra super beyond the ordinary love for anything related to online. And my love for online these days my love for digital literacy, my love for education technology came from that. And so when I left the classroom in 2017, I literally went back to what I knew. I knew online, I knew online business. I also knew how to teach. And so today I literally am an online course coach. So I merged my love for teaching. I merged my love for digital, all things digital. And I, I've literally built an entire business out of merging those two things together. So my goal here for you guys is to teach you how to do the same. 
literally. So if, if you want to start a cookie business or a candy business and set up a store in a shopping mall in your area, I'm not the person for you. Good? If you're thinking about starting an accountant consultancy, I'm not the person for you. I am solely interested in helping individuals how to use their talents, their gifts, your expertise, your signature story, and really building a brand, a full-time business on the digital space. So if that's where you are heading, if, if that's the direction you want to go, then stick around because these Monday night sessions are going to be great for you. Anything else, you're going to have to find another coach to help you out. All right? I'm just saying. I'm just keeping it real because I don't want people to come here and say they didn't get any value. Julia is talking foolishness. I'm not interested in going to her sessions. Don't go to Julia's sessions because she don't know what she's saying. Simply because you and I are not on the same page. We want to be on the same page. So you, are, you should only stay here if you are interested in building something online. Anything else? You know, you're going to have to hunt for your coach or your support or your help elsewhere. Right. Now, how did we come to this point? Because I, for today's session, what I'm really going to be doing is just sharing my journey with you. I'm going to be sharing a couple pointers on, on why we came here. And then I'm going to end tonight's session sharing with you six different options. Six that you can utilize to build your business online. All right? So let's, let's jump into some of the major problems we have as teachers, as educators. A couple of reasons that I find that today, especially in 2019, in the middle of COVID-19, pandemic, quarantine, and everything, I am finding that a lot of teachers are literally just fed up. Like if I was still in the classroom, I think I would be excited about teaching during this time because digital literacy is my jam, right? That's what I love. But I'm finding that for a lot of persons, a lot of teachers who are not so versed, are not has, as expert as I am with delivering over a virtual space. We're not handling COVID-19 teaching very well. And last week I was checking on a couple of teachers and I found out that so many teachers in the U.S., because school has already started in the U.S., in Jamaica, where I am, we don't start until October. Um, but in the U.S., after the first week of school, many, many teachers have already handed in their resignation. I can't count how many on one hand, based on all the reports. When I'm checking my Facebook groups on a daily basis, I see people are just resigning, resigning. I quit my job today. I handed in my resignation today. And then... I'm wondering in the back of my head, what are these people going to do? Because here's the thing. You see, once you reach that point where you realize you have to quit, then self-preservation has to kick in. But when you think about self-preservation, what in the world are you going to do next to preserve self, to preserve your health, to preserve your wealth, to preserve your standard of living, preserve your income, and preserve just your well-being overall? And it is difficult in these times to find a job because of the, the, the state that we're living in. And so teachers on a whole, we are going to have to get innovative and nothing beats innovation right now than the digital space. Because you have to, like they talk about um, not business as usual. This is it. This cannot, we cannot go on living the same way we've been for the past 10, 15 years because everything is now virtual. And I shared with somebody the other day that what we could not have done in 5, 10, 15 years, we did it in three months because of COVID-19 in the digital space. So we know as teachers, we are going to have to adapt. And in adapting, not just limit ourselves to generating income from the, the job that we have, but extend ourselves so that we can reach people across the globe. It was just today, literally today, I got a message from an individual in India. Let me say that again, India, I-N-D-I-A, which uh, when I checked the time zone, it was, they were like 10 and a half hours ahead of me. Who wants to collaborate with me for something? This is what I'm talking about, reaching a global space. I spoke at a conference today and one of our educators was sitting in her home, in her home office in New York. I'm in Jamaica. 
And the conference was reaching people all over the world. So these are the things that we have to be mindful of. Whether we decide that we're going to quit now, we're going to quit later, or we, we don't want to quit at all, we still have to prepare ourselves to expand and inc include ourselves in the global space. And not just that, but earn a living from it. And that's what I'm all about, you know, guys. I'm in this thing for the money. I kid you not. Now, the other issue that we're having is that I find that teachers feel like we don't have a choice. We don't know what else to do outside of teaching. Like we know how to write our lesson plans well. We know how to teach English literature well. We know how to teach science well, math, history, whatever the subject area is. You guys, you know how to do it. Like put me in a grade one classroom. Grade one is my favorite um, subject area. Oh, sorry, grade level, by the way. Put me in a grade one classroom right now and I'm in my zone. And we know how to do that well. But you see, when it comes on to stepping out of that, we, we, we get fearful. And I think we, we, we live in a culture where we think that all we can do is teach. Like once a teacher, always a teacher. And you never find a teacher just willingly stepping out into corporate, willingly stepping out, starting our own business, willingly stepping out into something else. Because I'm a teacher, what else am I going to do? And that mindset is not a progressive mindset. If I had that mindset and decided that I'm a teacher, I can't do anything else. I would still be in a very miserable job with a ridiculously ungrateful boss. <laughs> A low pay. Let me tell you how my last salary, guys. I said this all the time. 60,000 Jamaican dollars. And for those of you international folks who are online, that was equivalent, equivalent to 340 US dollars. No, sorry. It's not 340. 430, right? 430 US dollars at the time. And I say this because... This is the girl who is the digital literary, literary especially for where she goes. This is the girl who graduated valedictorian for her class, right? This is the girl who left college with a 3.8 GPA. You understand? This is the girl who was class leader for her group for the entire four years. And this is the girl who stands out and you put and, and had been teaching since 2006. And you put me into a job and give me 430 US dollars per month. That that cannot work. You understand? So with, with those kinds of limitations that we have on ourselves, and I know you, you know what your salary is. And the thing about it is the teacher's salary. We don't really have a scale. There's a scale for the public sector. But there are a lot of private school teachers who are getting way less than the teachers who are in the public sector. We wonder how in the world do we survive? So we cannot limit ourselves and say, okay, well, all I can do is teach. I don't know what else to do. No. Open up yourselves to explore other opportunities. The, the person who texted me earlier and told me that you guys were here, and what really got me smiling even more and up my respect for Greta was when she messaged me and said, you know, Julia, I'm an author now. She wrote a book. And today, I think her book is in what, two, three different languages? She wrote a reading book for kids. No, I think she has about three reading books in multiple languages. And this is an older teacher. She's going to cuss me off for this when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but she's an older teacher. Okay, I love you, Greta. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make with that is that we cannot box ourselves in and say, to, say, all I know how to do is teach. We have to think about what are some of the other opportunities that are there, whether you're going to use your teaching skills or you're going to use some other skills that God has blessed you with and use it to generate some multiple streams of income. If you go onto Amazon right now, and you look for, what's the title of the book again? Shoot, I, I completely forgot. Um, I soon tell you. Text me and tell me, Greta. If you go on Amazon and look for the book, you will see it. Right? These are things that you can do on your time and use the internet. Leverage the internet to maximize how much you can make how much you can earn, how much value you can deliver into the world, and how much impact you can create. You can literally start building out your business right now. And I'm going to share with you the list. I'm going to share with you the list. Because those are things that any teacher can start to do tomorrow. Not even tomorrow, like tonight. 
you already have the skills you already have the expertise all you need to know is a little business sense and you are good to go you are literally 90 percent there so don't limit yourself into thinking that all i can do is teach god never gave you one talent i am sure of it and how I know you are sure of it too. The reason a lot of you are here is because you've been getting a, a, that nudge inside of you. Am I right or am I right? You've been feeling that little nudge that there is more to you than just teaching. I know I had that feeling. I had that feeling for about four years before I stepped out. And I know you're having that feeling too. That's, the, that's one of the main reasons you ended up on this webinar anyway. If you, weren't, if you weren't having that nudging, what would be the point of showing up? You understand? So you have more inside of you than just being a classroom teacher. You have skills. You have experiences. You have knowledge. You have connections. You've built relationships. You have expertise. You just need somebody who is going to help to pull that out for you. And that's why we're having these sessions. That's why I'm here to help and to guide you guys along the way. Right now, the, on, the other thing I want to touch on is the fact that a lot of teachers, yes, you might know that you have that little nudging, you know what the little nudging is, you know, you want to build something outside of the classroom, but you don't know how to navigate, navigate the digital space. And that is all of that is learnable. You see, we're living in an age where you can YouTube anything. There's, you can literally find a coach or a guru or, or an expert on anything and ask them to teach you how to do the thing that you want to learn. So when it comes on to learning how to build out your brand online, you, you don't have any excuse. You're on YouTube right now. When you finish this call, just go into YouTube and type how to and do the thing that type the rest of the statement is the thing that you want to do okay how to write a, a children's literature book how to start a tutoring business how to create an online course anything just go into youtube and type how to and tell me if you don't find it if you don't find it on youtube just google it it's there it's there guys so even if you don't know how to navigate this digital space you can start with a simple youtube video Start with just reading a simple blog and following the instructions step by step. And I shared this on the conference this morning that you can always go and do your own research, whether it be on YouTube, on a blog, or any other free platform. And that's going to help. It will help. I kid you not. I did that in my early days. But here's a problem with that. It's going to take you a, a very long time. Like you can get so far with free content. And it's going to take you so long. What you can do in five years, going, um, going on YouTube, reading blogs and going through websites, you can literally do it in five months if you invest in a coach. And uh, let me tell you, this is, this is one of the things that really gets me energized when, when, I, when I talk about investing in yourself. Because I am a living testimony of that. When I left the classroom in 2017, I had my daughter. So for a whole year, I literally didn't do anything. I was being pregnant lady and then I was being mother. And then a year after that, I decided that I would step out and launch my own business. And let me tell you something. I started online from 2011. In 2014, I got really serious about it. And I was doing my teaching and I was doing online. I was also in college at the time, by the way. And so I was doing online part-time, on the side, on the evenings, weekends, whenever I have a little free time, I would freelance online. And I soon tell you about freelancing. I would freelance online. And this, this started in 2000 and late 2013, early 2014. And between 2014 and 2000, 2017, I was doing all of that. In my job, a teaching job, come home in the evenings, checking my freelance accounts, working on client projects. And all that time I was figuring out, how am I going to build this business? How am I going to build this brand? How am I going to do this? And I research and I research and I YouTube and I YouTube. And that was between 2014 to 2017. Three and a half full years. What that? Three and a half? Four? Three or four, seven? Yeah. <laughs> so for all that time, 
I was using free content. Now, he here is where the ball dropped. In 2018, December of 2018, to be exact, I invested my first dollar ever in personal development. I decided that I was gonna just, I'm just gonna spend the money and invest it in the people that I think can help me. I spent 20,000 Jamaican dollars, which is roughly about 200 US, 100 and something US, on a program in December. In February, I got a client that was directly related to that program. And in February, that program, that client that I got completely paid for the program. And that was a speaking, I did a speaker training. I've always wanted to become a speaker. I didn't know as much as I was a classroom teacher, I did not know how to handle an adult speaking space. So I paid for the speaking um, training in December. In February, I, early February, I think it was around the 4th or somewhere there, I got my first ever speaking engagement. And that speaking engagement covered the cost of what I paid for the training. Every single speaking engagement that I've got from February of 2019 until now is strictly profit. Now, imagine if I did not invest in that speaking, um, this, that speaker training. I would not be able to confidently put myself out there in public and call myself a speaker. I couldn't because I was not confident about it. I didn't think I could speak. And I learned so much in that particular training that I am able to deliver myself on a stage, in a conference, in front of any audience, on a different level, and demand the kind of money that I want when I make a presentation. Not all the speaking engagements I do are paid, like some of them are free. The one this morning was pro bono. But whenever a client comes to me and wants me to address their audience, I can demand a certain figure. As a matter of fact, I have my, my rating sheet that I go to whenever persons approach me for speaking engagements. Right, So I can demand a certain price because I have my training, I have experience, and I have invested in developing myself as a speaker. So nobody can come to me today and say, just do a thing for me, Julia, just like that, and, 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 and I give it to them free. It must be under special arrangement. <laughs> you understand? So what I could not have done in three, four years, I was able to do in a, not a year, two months. Between December and February, that was literally two months. To establish myself as a confident speaker and got paid to do my very first speaking engagement. My very first speaking No, I lie. I had done one before for a friend. So not, not exact first. But let's just call that the first official one. Got paid to do that. If I had not invested, my, invested in myself in that speaker training, what could have happened? Let me give you a couple more. Between... All of 2019 was a year of learning and growing for me, right? And I decided that 2019, I was going to invest in myself. I invested in coaches. I invested in trainings. I went to conferences. I went to workshops. I went to all kinds of things about online courses. And I can confidently say that every money I spent in 2019, and I have spent quite a bit, quite a bit on just training and development and learning and growing in 2019 all of that has literally paid back for itself already as of to, today 2020 everything because of the fact that i did not just went to these events went to these coaches learned from them and sat on. i didn't just do that I took what I learned from every single event, every single coach, everything, every single course and implemented and put them into action. And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you, how you can do that too. Because you can pay for every co um, the best coach in the world. You can go to the most amazing conference and learn, learn, learn. And you still do not earn if you just took notes and went home, closed the book and did nothing. Guys, you're teachers. You know this. <laughs> you know this. You, understand? You, know, you guys know this. I know you know this, you know, but you see, sometimes you need to get a dose of your own medicine. And that's why I'm here. So investing in yourself is literally going to cut the, the learning curve. It's going to cut your growth curve in a, a whole lot shorter. So what I could not have done in four years, I did it in one and a half. 
So what I took four years to do for free, researching YouTube, going on blogs and all these things, what took me four years of me trying to figure it out on my own, in a year and a half of investing in myself and really paying the experts to pour into me, I was able to do in a year and a half what I could not do in four. So here is my challenge to you. If you do, if you're, if you're in this space and thinking about really starting a business as a teacher entrepreneur, building out an online brand, don't take four years and try and figure it out for free. You're going to be wasting your time. You're going to be wasting a lot of energy when you could have really spent some money and just invested in yourself and implement what you've learned. Because here's the thing. You see, when you get free content, free content is very general. And I can tell you that even with these workshops, it's very general. It's like whatever questions you ask me, I'm going to take a deep dive in and answer them. I will move on to something else. Very general. You see, when you pay for a program, you pay for a course, you pay for a coach, you pay for a workshop, that content is very specific to exactly what you want and you need to grow. So, for example, we're talking about online business now. And I'm it, everything that I'm going to be sharing, like I know so much about online business and I could come and share with you from so many different angles. But you go, come into my mentorship program and everything is an eight-week plan, tailored and guided to direct you from start to finish how to build out your online brand. You want to talk about online courses and I am the course coach, right? You, you ask me any question about online courses, I can give you a very simplified answer. But if you really want to get your online course up and running and making sales, you have to get join the program where in six weeks, because this week, la yeah, this week is the final week for my first cohort of students who I trained to become online um, course specialists, to create their own courses and publish them online. Some of them are already making sales. So when you get into a paid program, whether it be a coach, a mentorship, a, a conference, an online course, that's where it gets very specific. So if you don't know how to navigate the online space, then you need to invest in someone, in something that is going to help you to specifically navigate the area that you are interested in navigating. Good? Are we understanding? I know there's no chat. I don't know. I know there is no chat. But anyway, we still, I want to nod your head. <laughs> nod your head. And let me know if you're understanding. I'm virtually seeing you now. <laughs> This is hilarious. Guys, I'll make sure to chat up next week. Uh, yeah, so with that said, let me just share a little bit of how I ended up online. And then um, I'm going to share with you the opportunities for teachers, especially, especially. So in 2014, yeah, I see some hearts going up on Instagram. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at you guys. <laughs> in 2014, I Well, I've been online since 2011, but I decided to take a deep dive in 2014 and because at that point, I was not quite happy with the kind of money that I was making and I was on a mission to make $1,000 per month. The first time I made any money online, I made $34 US and that was a huge deal for me. Big deal. I went, I opened up my YouTube and I told the world about it. It was a big deal. And when I saw that first $34 came in, that was when my mind was blown. I said, listen, if I can make $34, I must can make $3,400. Because I saw the opportunity, I saw the possibility opened up, and I realized that there was a chance that this can happen. And that's when I started to explore some more. And at that time, I found some web, websites that you call freelance websites. And on those freelance websites, you are able to connect with clients all across the world. So this is where you need to grab a pen and a paper because I'm about to share them with you. Write them down. So the first one that I, well, my favorite one that I used is called peopleperhour.com. Now, mind you, I'm not on People Per Hour anymore. Because I've, I've, my last freelancing gig was many, many years ago. It was, I did my last gig maybe 2016, I believe. Yeah. But in 2000, and by the way, 
this is not old information because these websites still do exist and operate. So when you think about freelancing online, peopleperhour.com was my favorite website. That's where I got 99% of my clients. And freelancing online really involves you just doing projects for various clients all over the world. So entrepreneurs from every corner of the earth, as long as they speak English, they post projects on these websites and you go in, you see the project, you decide whether or not this is something that you can do and you apply for the project. If the client selects you as the, the person they want to work on the project, then you get to work. You deliver the project to your client. The client sends money into your account on the platform. Everybody is happy and you move on to the next job. So that's what I was doing. That is what I was doing for quite a while online. And that went on for, I don't know, maybe two, three years. In doing that, I started to share with individuals what I was doing and people started to get curious. I said, Julia, what is this freelance thing? Tell me how you're, you're making money with clients from Africa and Europe and US and Canada. We don't understand. We want to know. We want to make some money too. And that was how my very first online course was born. I created my first online course in, 2006, in 2014 with six students. And what I did in that course was I taught them how to become freelancers online. So imagine that. I never planned to, to, to build an online course, you know. It kind of just happened because everybody kept asking me, what in the world am I doing? So rather than answering people one-on-one -on -one every time, repeating the same thing over and over, telling them the very same thing that I was doing again and again, I just decided I'm just going to say this one time in a course. So y'all yeah, pay for it and come. And so six students bought the course. I taught them how to become a freelancer online using the platform that I was using. So I didn't, I didn't go out and have to research any extra information in there, guys. I'm teaching them what I was doing. And that is my first tip for you. You can literally teach people the, the same process you are going through. That was my very on, first online course. I taught them what I was doing to make sales on this freelance platform. And so there is that. There is another platform called Upwork.com. And then there is another platform called Fiverr.com. And after I taught my very first online course, I went on to create. Well, I had a blog already, but I started blogging a little bit more. And in that, I was able to generate affiliate income. I started promoting other people's products and services and getting commissions from them. So I had three income streams at that time. I was doing freelance projects for clients all over the world. I had this course that I was teaching. And then I was getting affiliate commission whenever I promoted the other person's products and services. And so when that, when that money started to come in, you know, my skin catch fire. <laughs> in Jamaican terms, that means you get really, really excited for all of my foreigners online. <laughs> So when I saw that, I realized there is so much you can really and truly do as it relates to generating an income stream online. And I noticed I'm, I didn't mention anything about it. The only teaching thing I was doing was the online courses. Freelancing, there was nothing in my freelance projects that involved teaching. Absolutely nothing. I was creating um, graphics for individuals using a simple platform. I was writing, I was literally writing blog posts for people, for one lady in Africa had me writing blog posts on natural hair for her. Nothing in my freelance projects involved teaching. So don't limit yourself. Don't think that if you come in online, you have to teach, you have to do something teacher related. No, you can do literally anything that your skills and your talents will allow you to do. And so I jumped from freelancing to creating online course to earning affiliate income and then my blog. I just kept writing on my blog. And then I immersed myself into teaching again. And so when I decided that I would step out of the classroom in 2017, I had no other choice. Like this is, a, I knew this, like this, I knew online. So might as well, I just went back to it. And so from 2018 in December to today, the Boss Teacher brand has been creating waves all across the world. And I say all across the world because I'm impacting people in India. I'm impacting people in the UK. I'm impacting people in Jamaica. I'm impacting people in the US. 
I'm impacting people in Pakistan. I'm impacting people in Africa. I'm just thinking of all the places. Like right now, my podcast is reaching over, I think the last time I checked is was 16 countries. And counting. Because moving forward, our Monday night sessions are going to be uploaded onto the podcast. So if you miss the live session, then you can listen to it on the podcast a few days later. So imagine you, a classroom teacher, just a regular classroom teacher doing your thing and impacting lives all across the world and earning in that same process. Just, ima just, just imagine, what, what would that do for you? Like literally, what would that do for you? Think about that. Because I was able to build this brand in a year and a half. I'm, I'm literally going into year two right now. But in a year and a half, I was able to move from an unemployed teacher to a well-known international brand and growing. Now, you know, imagine what your life could look like in a year and a half if you just decided to step out in your gifts, in your calling, in your talents, and everything that God called you to be. Imagine that. Now... When it comes on to using your gifts and your talents, I want you to think about two things. Think about what you are currently doing as a teacher and how you can expand that to impact the world and gain international clients. And then also think about what else you're good at. What are you passionate about? What am I really, really skilled at? What do people say that I am the expert at? What do people come to me all the time as the go-to person for? Like, for me, everybody comes to me and asks me about technology all the time. All of my teacher friends, Julia, can you fix my computer? No, I can't fix your computer. I'm not a computer technician. I only know a lot about online business. But people in the back of their mind, since I am the online girl, I must know how to fix their computer. <laughs> so when people come to me, they usually come to me for technology-related advice. That is your gift. That is your expertise. Whatever people come to you for on a constant basis asking you to help them with, that is your expertise. And so when individuals come to me about that, I say, oh, but there must be a reason they're coming to me about that all the time. They see me as the expert in that area. So I want you to think about those skills, those things that you're super passionate about. Those things, if, if you did them and nobody paid you to do it, you'd still be happy doing it. What, what are those things? What is that thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night and you're grabbing a book to write down um, something about because it excites you so much? What is that thing that you could close your eyes and literally do it without even having second thoughts about it? Those things that come naturally to you, those are your skills. Those are your talents, your gifts. Those are the things that God blessed you with. Those are the expertise that you can utilize. So two things. One, what do you do now as a teacher and how can you expand on that? Two, what are you naturally gifted at that you can use to build a business? Me love chat. And hence, I had to be a teacher. This <laughs> is one of those things that, yeah. I'm naturally shy though, you know, guys. I only light up when I have an audience. But think about those things and then decide how can you build those out as a brand, as a full-fledged business and start generating income from it. Now, I'm going to share with you, let me pull them up. I'm going to share with you six different businesses that a teacher, you specifically as a teacher, can start. So just give me a quick second. Let me pull those up. <clears throat> Here we go. Six business ideas that you as a teacher can start today. So if you're not sure how you can expand your teaching outside of the classroom, if you're not sure what you're passionate or skilled about just yet, Go home and think about it. As a matter of fact, write down those two things in your notebooks right now. How can I expand what I currently do as a teacher? And how can I use my talents to build a business? Write those two things down. If you cannot find an answer to it right now, this is something I want you to think deeply about. 
in the coming week. Because on Monday night, next week, Monday, when we meet here again, we're going to start building on that. So here are six business ideas that any teacher, when I say any teacher, I literally mean any teacher can start today. And not, not all of these are related to online business, by the way. Not all of them. But I'm giving them to you nevertheless because I know it's going to be helpful. So the first one is, write it down. You can become a tutor. So any subject area you teach, you can become a private tutor. Even if it's early childhood. Some of you think, oh, but how can an early childhood teacher become a tutor? Yes. Reading specialists, a lot of parents are struggling, especially in this time, how to keep their kids learning and growing and developing well. So you can become a tutor. So if you're a high school teacher, what's the subject area that you teach? If you teach primary, what's the subject area that you love? You can tutor um, individuals in that area. Number two, offering childcare services. So if, not if, in this time, there are a lot of parents who are struggling with taking care of their own kids. So when I say struggling, I mean terribly struggling with taking care of their own kids. And a lot of parents also have to be back at work. In most cases where I am in Jamaica, school does not reopen until October 5. And that is still, we're still really not sure whether or not school is going to be open on October 5. And so parents need somewhere to put their kids while they have to go to work. And so you can offer a COVID proof child care service start there and offer the parents some guarantees about how you're going to maintain health and safety while you're there or while your 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 child care expert is there number three online courses that's where i come in by the way <laughs> so you can literally take anything and turn it into an online course Absolutely anything. It could be related to your subject area or it could be related to anything in your life. There are people teaching online courses about how to get the perfect man, how to find the perfect mate. There are people teaching online courses about how to juggle three balls. There are online courses about how to meditate. There are online courses about how to get over divorce, how to get rid of fibroids naturally. There are literally anything you can take and turn it into an online course. Number four, write a book. And write a book does not have to be hard. We're not talking about writing a Shakespeare novel. We're not talking about writing a, a motivational book from one of the gurus of the world. No, we're not talking about that. It could be as simple as writing a children's storybook. My friend Greta, did you send me the text? Let me check it. I'm going to tell you guys to, to go and check out Greta's book. I'm smart after all. You know I have it on my bookshelf. It's because my son, he hasn't read it in a while. That's why I forgot. So here, she sent me the text. If you go on Amazon and search for I am smart after all, the other one is called Abby, love without a cause. The third one she has is, if I keep trying, I know I can. And the latest one, see, then, oh, there's another one in the list. Sleepy time, bedtime stories, and quick prayers. What's that? Four, one, two, oops, stop. One, two, three, four. Four books, and I know that they are in multiple languages. So you can sit down tonight. Like you guys, you tell your kids stories all the time. You make up stories to put in your lesson plans all the time. We, this, these are things that we do. We write songs. We write stories all the time. And we share them in our classroom. Our kids have the most amazing time. They enjoy the lesson. If you can pull up one of those lessons with that story or that song, Turn it into a book and just find a designer and let them pretty it up for you. Publish it on Amazon and start making some sales. If you are a content tutor like the high, the, 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 the high school teachers, you can create like a workbook that your, student can, your students can use to accompany the content that you are teaching them in class. Let me tell you a story. I was at... Um, What's the name of the school again? Wilma's School for Girls recently sharing with the teachers there. And about a month or so later, I was checking up with them. A computer teacher told me that within the time that I left, when I made the presentation there, she was so inspired 
that she realized that she had a ton of worksheets on her computer that she was not utilizing. These are worksheets that she has been building over the years and sharing them with her students. And she didn't think anything of it. And so when I left there, after the talk with them, I left there, she went home and she pulled everything together on her computer and she came up with a manual that she, at that time she had intended to pitch it to the Ministry of Education. Now imagine if that book gets into the curriculum. How awesome would that be? <laughs> so you can become your own authors, guys. Write a book, content area, write a content book, write a story book, write a poem book, write a song book. You, we, we are so creative as teachers, we know these things. So it's just a matter of putting it together formally. The other thing that is booming right now is homeschooling. So guys, homeschool consultant it is. Become a homeschool consultant, you see? Because a lot of parents are no longer interested in sending their kids to school because of COVID-19. I have seen where the homeschool industry is just blowing up. There are a lot of new, like thousands, probably millions of homeschool, new homeschool parents. And they are clueless as to what to do. Literally clueless. They need help. I'm in a lot of homeschool groups on Facebook and I see the struggles that these parents are having. They need help. You can become a homeschool consultant. You're the teacher, you're the expert and a system guide them along the process of how to effectively homeschool their kids. That's a business right idea right here. Whoever takes it and run with it, just give me some credit when you're making all the money. <laughs> And the final one that I'm going to be sharing with you is to sell your teaching resources in an online marketplace. So your lesson plans, all of the activity sheets that you've been creating. You see, just as how I shared with you about the computer teacher and what she did, she compiled all of hers and turned it into a book. You can, lit you can not only compile it and turn it into a book, you can literally sell the pages. You can sell the pages one off. There is the most popular online marketplace I know of is teacherspayteachers.com. If you type that into Google, it will take you directly to the website. Teacherspayteachers.com. You can sell worksheets. You can sell individual lessons. You can sell lesson plan. You can sell a one-page activity. You can sell endless classroom-related things on TPT. And a lot of teachers I know in the U.S. are taking full advantage of that platform. There are teachers making a full-time income just selling one and two pages off of teachers per TPT. So those are some of just six options I'll share with you about how you can really just some ideas about how to start your teaching business. Right? Now, tonight, as a matter of fact. So when we done, we're done with this call, Go and research some of them. Now, we're going to be meeting here every Monday. And I want you to preempt you because there's a mentorship program that I have called the Boss Teacher Mentorship. And that mentorship is basically going to help you to identify what it is that you can build a business around, how you are going to find the right people to sell your product, not your product, your services to, and then how you're going to build it out as a full-fledged business that you can literally wake up to payment notifications. I tell people all the time, when I go to sleep at night, tomorrow morning I open my email, I have a notification from PayPal to say, Julia, somebody just deposited X amount in your account. You just made a sale on X product, Y product, X... That is my life these days. It took me a year and a half to build, but that is my life these days. And I'm not saying it because I'm showing off. I'm saying it to show you what is possible. You take the time now to lay the foundation to build that, and you can literally go to sleep and wake up to new money in your account. That is literally what I want for you because I am in the business of helping teachers to really thrive in every single area of our lives. So the mentorship program, the boss teacher, the class teacher to boss teacher mentorship program is a program that is going to help you to build out a business 
that you can literally set on automation. And we're not just going to be touching on business, guys, because I am all about holistic development. One of the things I decided that I have to include in the program is how to flourish in the 10 key areas of life. This is something that I taught early, earlier this year in a program called Position for Purpose. And guys, you should see the testimonials. I kid you not. I cried when I looked at some of them. The last time I bawled was when I read a, a poem from one of my students. I, a ball in living here I watched. I didn't cry on camera, <laughs> but I, when, when I was done filming the video and telling the world about it, I, I just sat there and I thought about it and I said, look at God, he, look at God. Look how God set me up to really impact these people's lives. And I'm not talking about children. I'm talking about adults who are experiencing a deep level of transformation because of the value I was able to provide in one course, one single course. The oldest, my oldest student is 65 years old. She had her birthday when we were doing the program, 65. And she's, she, cannot, she cannot thank me enough. Oh, she, every, every time she called me, she said, boy, Julia, I thank you. Like, I don't know when she's going to stop thanking me. But the point I'm trying to make is that this mentorship program is going to dig deep. It's going to rivet into every corner of your life and your soul and your being. And I'm lit my intention is literally make you unrecognizable to the people who knew you two years ago. Like in two years time, I want you to become unrecognizable. Your life should be so transformed into the better version of you that the people who knew you two years ago look at you and say, she changed or him change. Because I've had that. I've literally had people come up to me and say, Julia, what, what have you done to yourself? This is not the Julia I knew two, two years ago. And it is true. And I'm okay with that because I'm changing for the better. I'm thriving and I'm continuing to thrive. And the, the strategies, the principles, the systems that I have set up over the past year and a half, two years, so that I am able to thrive at this level is literally what I'm going to be sharing with you. So boss teachers, if you are ready to thrive, I want you to go to the website bossteacheracademy.com. Let me repeat it, bossteacheracademy.com. And I want you to click on the option that has the mentorship section. And all you're going to do is schedule a 20 minute call with me. The 20 minute call is free and it is literally only there to help us to decide whether or not we are fit to work together. Because what I'm finding is that not everybody is ready. As much as we have over 30 odd people on this call. And yes, this entrepreneurship thing sounds nice. Yes, making money sounds good. Yes, waking up to payment notifications sounds fabulous and awesome. But not everybody is ready. So every week we're going to be touching a different topic as it relates to building out an online business. And here's the thing. I did a, uh, I did a question inside of the Facebook group. Guys, you have, have you guys gone over and joined the Facebook group? By the way, it's if you go on Facebook, it's Teacher Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneur Success Club. Look for it, request to join the group, and I will give you admission there. Um, inside of the group, I asked a question um, a few days ago. I, and the question was, what is it that you would be most interested in learning about building online courses? And I kid you not, so many people said they want to learn about marketing. And so I think, if, I mean, in the early stages, we're going to be talking a lot about marketing. But like I mentioned to you as well, I want you to ask questions. I'm sorry that the chat wasn't up tonight so I could get it to interact with you guys. But the more questions you ask, it gives me idea. It gauges me, helps me to gauge what I'm going to be sharing with you moving forward. Because I would rather share with you what you need to know rather than what I think you, need, you want to learn. You understand? So I'm going to be addressing your concerns, all the things that you are interested in to build your, your online business, your digital business. And if you, if you don't give me any ideas, I'm just going to come with what I have. That's all. <laughs> so join the Facebook group so I can, I can gauge your feedback. Post your questions there. <clears throat> And I promise you we'll have the chat fixed next week so we can have the Q&A session. We're, we're, my intention is to have a Q&A session where you guys ask the question and, and I answer them live on the Monday night session. So we're going to sort out the chat so we can have that ready for next week. But in the meantime, 
two things. Join the Facebook group. What? No, three things I'm going to tell you to do. Join the Facebook group, Teacher Entrepreneur Success Club. One. Two, go to bossteacheracademy.com and just click on the mentorship option and schedule your 20-minute appointment with me. Okay? bossteacheracademy.com. And three, I want you to share this, this information, this link right here, this, this page, share it with your teacher colleagues. If you found any sort of value in tonight's session, share it. Because I know there, there are so many teachers who are ignorant, who are in the dark about this thing, and they would, they would benefit from seeing the light. So share, 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 share. Just, just send it off in their email, WhatsApp it to them, send it in a DM on social media, and just let them know what's happening. Is boss teacher lady going to help us to make some more money and to thrive in all of the 10 key areas of our lives? Come on, come. Good things going on over here. All right, guys. So with that said, we're going to be closing off the session tonight. I'm reminding you that this is an every Monday night thing. So you can just come over on YouTube and join me here next week. If we don't get the chat, then something is going to have to be done. We'll probably do it on Zoom, but I prefer to do it on YouTube. All right, guys. So any questions, I'm going to be jumping over into the Facebook group now to see if you guys post any questions there. And I'm going to be responding to them between now and the next 30 minutes. So if you want my response immediately, go over to the Facebook group now. I'm going to be hopping over there so we can chit chat. All right, guys. Ah, Instagram is there. Do you guys have any questions on Instagram? Two more minutes and then we can close up. Any questions from your IG? Let me know. Did you find value in tonight's session? Just tap, tap the hearts and let me know. If I see the hearts coming, I'll take it as a yes. No questions? All right, let me just pop on over into the Facebook group. So what's happening here? All right, so persons are requesting to join. All right, I'm going to let you all in. All right, good. All right, so approve. All right, the hearts are coming up on IG. Thank you. <laughs> So we know these sessions are going to be lit moving forward, right? Because we're jumping into content next week. Next week, y'all didn't take any notes to this week? Believe me, next week you're going to be writing like crazy. Walk with your pen and your pencil and your notebook and everything next week. So I'm approving people right now in the Facebook group, guys. So if you're not there, come on over. All right, so we, we just added some people. All right, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Instagram, thanks for hanging out with me. You guys are on YouTube as well. All right. So see you next week, Monday, or over in the Facebook group. All right. Ciao. YouTube, guys.